Hey, this is Alonzo from NetworkVoyage.com again. I am uh, I'm currently filming outside, so you may hear some wind chimes in the background or whatnot, but it's cool. Uh, today we're going to go over Pervy Land Spanning Tree Plus, uh, or PVST Plus, which was originally a Cisco proprietary solution to take advantage of unused links and uh, enable uh, spanning tree instances on a, on a Pervy Land instance. The objectives here on the right, we're going to display the root bridge for both VLANs. And in this scenario, I have VLANs 1 and 2. VLAN 1 PCs are these two PCs on the left and the right. And then everything in this red square belongs to VLAN 2. And uh, all these dotted line crossover lines, uh, they're trunks. They're 802.1Q trunks. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and change the root bridge for VLAN 2. I'm going to make it switch 3, which is right here. And then we're going to uh, verify that. And then we're going to discuss the pros and we're going to discuss the cons of per VLAN spanning tree. So here we go. I th believe switch one is the current route for both VLANs. So I'm going to do a show VLAN brief and show you. All I have here is VLAN one and two. And there's nothing connected to VLAN two on switch one. It's only, it's only on switch two and switch three. We're going to do a show spanning tree VLAN one. Sorry. So for VLAN 1, we can see that it is the root bridge. And if we do a show span tree VLAN 2, for VLAN 2, it is also the root bridge. Um, that's pretty easy to figure out because uh, the MAC address, uh, the priorities, and all that. Um, switch 1 has the lowest MAC address, so obviously he's going to be the, the root bridge for VLAN 1. So all I did was create VLAN 2. So Naturally, switch one will become the root bridge for those VLANs too. But on to the second objective here. We're going to go ahead and change the priority on the switch three to become the root for VLAN two. So this is how you do that. Do spanning tree VLAN two. Um, you can do a root, which will kind of allow the system to just auto configure a lower uh, priority value. But in this scenario, I'm going to do a priority of 0 and just force it to be the absolute lowest priority. So if we do a show VLAN, show spanning tree, VLAN 2, now we can see that this root is, uh, this bridge is the root, switch 3. And the priority, I changed it to 0. And then, of course, PVST uses the VLAN number and adds it to the uh, to the default priority, so 0 plus 2 is going to give us a priority of 2, which is the lowest uh, bridge ID in the topology. And um, again, the reason you would want to do something like this is to take advantage of the scenario where, if you notice, Fast Ethernet 7 was in fact uh, it was in fact blocking when it was when it was originally configured because spanning tree it was all pretty much this was the root bridge, VLAN 1 was the root. And as a matter of fact, let's let's take a look at that. Let's change it back. Let's see. Spanning tree, VLAN 2, priority. Let's change it back to 32768. Alright. Did it take it? Let's check it out. Oh, not yet. Did not work. Let's go back here and see what happened on switch 3. Okay. Looks like it took some time. Okay. While I was checking it. Okay. So, um, what I'm focused here is on Fast Ethernet 7. Currently, uh, switch 1 is the root bridge for both. For both VLANs. And you can take a look at that here. It says this is the root bridge for VLAN 1 and it is the root bridge for VLAN 1 for VLAN 1 and VLAN 2 so because this guy's the root it's actually blocking this link and that's the reason PVST was invented we're kinda wasting this bandwidth right here even though at this scenario it's a hundred megabit link you know even if it was a gig link you know this guy has the lowest MAC address so he would still be the root um, but let's just say this was a gig link. We're wasting a gig worth of bandwidth, right? And so in order to take advantage of that bandwidth, we would go ahead and change this switch 3 to what we did before. Spanning tree VLAN 2. 
priority zero. All right. Now we're going to see after that takes effect, we're going to see uh, this fast Ethernet seven is going to turn green because it will become active for spanning tree uh, VLAN two. We're just going to give it some time here. Again, this is the original spanning tree protocol, and I haven't. Uh, I don't think there's any tweaks you can do to it, so give it some time here and this is a good oh, there it goes it turned green okay so this link is now active for spanning tree vlan 2 we'll go ahead and verify that looking at the switch do a show spanning tree and if we look at vlan 1 it says we got to go up to uh, out port gigabit 1 2 to the switch 1 which is the root and for VLAN 2, we see that this guy is the root. Alright, so again, we are now utilizing this link between switch 2 and switch 3 for all the PCs that are in VLAN 2. And um, that's basically what PVST is. It's basically the old spanning tree protocol, but you can actually enable it per VLAN. Okay, um, I wanted to discuss the pros and cons. Okay, so pros is of course it gives you load sharing of the bandwidth and a con would be the more VLANs you have and the more times you do this if you want to load balance all the even numbers let's say on, on switch one and you want to load balance all the odd numbers on switch two you realize you're going to eat up a lot of CPU cycles because it has to keep track of all those BPDUs and all those banding tree instances and as your network grows it's just going to be very difficult to manage so um, that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you were able to grasp that concept and um, give me some feedback, man. Uh, let me know if you like this video or not. Thank you and have a good day.